I wish I could remember the name of the author. He taught, uh, I think, at uh, Seton Hall University, and uh, we actually had him down here for a day of uh, recollection or talk to uh, our, a group of folks from our parish going back about eight or nine years ago. And his book was all about the people in the Gospels whose names we don't know. And he spent some time, he had done a lot of research, but reflecting on these hidden lives of people that we just get a glimpse of for a moment. And I, I, I was thinking that um, the little boy in the gospel passage today was not in that book. So I offer it to you. If you want to have a little point of meditation, think of what this little guy did. We don't know his name. We don't know where he was from. All we know is that Andrew said, oh, by the way, we have a kid here who's got some barley loaves and some fish. We don't know whether the, the little boy came and said, here, sir, or whether he was hiding them and getting ready to have his own. But anyway, it was found out and there was food. And then Jesus took that little bit and did the miracle that we're so familiar with. But Listen to what Andrew said. There's a boy here who has five barley loaves and a, a few, the two fish. But what good are these for so many? You hear that? Here's a possibility. Here's maybe the possibility of a solution. Oh, but no. What good is there? Have you ever come up with a really great idea and someone said, yeah, n no. That's a weird expression we do, though, isn't it? Yeah, no. Well, we do it depending on what's inside here many times. Maybe it's our life experience. Maybe it's our attitude. But so many times we take a possibility and we find all the reasons why it cannot work instead of the possibility that it might. So when I think of this little guy, I do think of him as wanting to help. As saying, I know I'm a little guy, but here, it's not much. But take it and use it. Then the question that pops into my head is, what happens to the kid after that? Did he stay and follow Jesus? Was he given a hero's welcome back home when he told the story of what he did? Were other people jealous of him being involved in a miracle? Again, it's a good place to go in our heads. But I want to talk a little bit just real quick. But what good are these for so many? This, this poverty of resources and we see what Jesus is able to do with even just the littlest bit. Today we celebrate the feast of um, St. Catherine of Siena, a great doctor of the church, a reformer. And I, I just want to share with you, um, she understood this, this poverty of the human heart sometimes when we don't see things well. And she wrestled with her, her, herself. Um, there's a, a, a writing called The Dialogue and in which she has conversation with Christ. And in the record of that, he says to her, do you know what you are to me and what I am to you, my daughter? I am he who is, you are she who is not. I don't know how I'd feel if that's what God is saying to me. But here's where grace comes in. She understood, she understood that God was all in all and that she, in relationship to God, was as nothing. But she accepted that. 
So she was unafraid of peering into her own poverty because of Christ's goodness. You see, when, when, when Jesus spoke to her, he didn't speak to her to belittle her. He spoke to her out of his goodness and setting the field to understand where we are, his position and her position. But she invited Christ right into her nothingness and in that found his freedom filling her to overflowing amidst the dark shadows of her own heart. When she allowed Jesus in, when she acknowledged her poverty, when she welcomed the love of Christ into her, she found the courage to be who God created her to be. And as we heard in the opening reading to today, she set the world on fire. The little boy in today's gospel didn't shy away from the little he had to offer because, I'd like to believe, he knew Christ would multiply his meager offering. So my friends, for you and me, don't ever let ourselves think that we're not enough, or that we can't do, or that our opinion doesn't matter, or that what we have to offer isn't enough. But let us welcome Christ into our hearts, that he might take what we have and multiply it to abundance. Amen.